Hi, good morning, friends. So today I will be discussing something on absorption and viability of drugs. Uh, I am making this video after about two weeks' time. Uh, a good gap. Uh, I was on holiday, so was unable to make a video. Anyway, so let's start discussing on absorption and viability of drugs. Um, these two important concepts um, in clinical pharmacology um, that are required to determine um, the amount of dose um, which is given to individual of a drug. It also determines uh, the frequency of administration, how frequently you need to administer, but of course to a lesser extent. But yes, dose of a drug is what is important when you discuss about absorption option viability uh, and also the, some things that deal with the formulation itself uh, which would be which formulation uh, would be the ones which is uh, highly suitable uh, for a specific condition and for a specific uh, patient for example uh, oral tablet or IV injection in a particular scenario or a particular emergency or a normal condition uh, that is all de determines uh, uh, by uh, the absorption and the viability of drugs uh, so let's see what these things um, have to do with uh, and drug uh, um, and the drug uh, uh, movement across the body so uh, as you all know by now uh, it's a kind of pharmacokinetic process so absorption of a drug is a pharmacokinetic process uh, now let me be very clear on this like pharmacokinetics split the term uh, pharmacokinetics uh, we have done this lectures previously so if you are new to my channel you can always watch my uh, lecture on uh, definitions of kinetics and dynamics but then again to revise it uh, pharmacokinetics pharmaco is drug and kinetics is something to deal with the movement isn't it velocity so a uh, drug doesn't have uh, uh, hands and legs so uh, it has to move across so the movement of the drug across the body huh? across the body so movement of the drug molecules across the body is what we call it as pharmacokinetics now uh, it can also be defined as what the body does to the drug huh? what the body does to that so absorption first thing is absorption the drug is absorbed it gets distributed i have even a, 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 a lecture on distribution uh, you can always uh, watch my uh, lecture on volume of distribution uh, then comes metabolism where uh, drugs are rendered uh, ineffective by the organs mostly the liver again a lecture on that has been taken and then at last would be the excretion so uh, there is of course a lecture on excretion uh, on my channel so if you are new to my channel please uh, to watch uh, distribution metabolism and excretion and as well as uh, this lecture which deals with absorption so these are the ADME processes capital ADME processes that are uh, what we call it as the pharmacokinetic principles of uh, uh, drug uh, within the body now we talk of absorption absorption is a process by which a drug enters the bloodstream without being chemically altered so we are talking of uh, the act drug that enters the body and remember this term without chemical alteration without chemical alteration. so whatever gets absorbed in the bloodstream maybe it's through the GIT if you are trying to GIT is gastrointestinal tract if you are trying to give the drug by oral route or it might be uh, from any kind of parental route directly into the arteries and the veins for example after uh, intravenous or intramuscular or a subcute injection so the blood has to uh, the drug has to reach the blood stream uh, and it shouldn't be chemically altered so uh, that process is what we call it as the absorption process now in general in general if we talk of drug absorption there are various processes that bring about this kind of absorption so we have passive diffusion uh, we have something called as carrier mediated transport which consists of active diffusion and facilitated diffusion the third would be the endocytosis in which we have the bulk molecules and the water coming in and going out for example pinocytosis phagocytosis the fourth would be exocytosis and the last one which again is important as far as drug absorption is concerned is something to do with the poor transport of the drug molecules. So these five processes in general uh, make up what we call it as a mechanism 
of drug absorption. We'll come to these processes one by one and see how significant they are as far as drug absorption is concerned. We think of passive diffusion. Passive, the word passive, that means it is uh, uh, in line with the concentration gradient since it is passive we don't require energy it's one of the most common ways in which drugs are absorbed so remember it's something which is uh, in the line of concentration gradient it doesn't require energy it is a non-saturable process so since it doesn't require energy uh, it is usually something which is uh, not saturable so you don't see saturated kinetics when you talk of passive diffusion you don't require any carrier model that also defines that it is not a saturable process it also depends upon lipid solubility because that determines how effective the drugs would get from one side of the membrane to the other side and definitely the ph of the medium because that determines the ionization the charge on the drug molecules if the drug molecules are having charge then the um, you know the, the the transport of molecules from one side of the membrane to the other side of the membrane would become difficult but uh, at the same time unionized molecules uh, they are at a free will to transfer from one side of the membrane to the other side so ph does determine the ionization and indirectly affect the passive diffusion so it is something which is very unique about passive diffusion now here you can see the molecules of the dye uh, which are in red color and then you have this membrane with a lot of pores um, in it that's the yellow color thing and you can see that uh, you know at the end of the thing the molecules get distributed equally across uh, the two compartments and uh, through the passing through the membrane so that is what we call it as a passive diffusion so molecules are moving from high concentration to low concentration through the membrane and it's not carrier it's not energy dependent process neither carrier dependent process but at the end what you see is uh, the equilibrium on both sides of uh, the membrane so that that is what i was talking of when you talk of passive diffusion uh, one of the most important ways in which drugs are absorbed and then comes the active diffusion now active the word active means it requires energy it might require a carrier it might be a saturable process because it requires carriers so if all the carriers mom, proteins are being used up then it comes to a saturation uh, transport so it's relatively unusual because energy is required uh, anybody won't like to uh, what I can say um, lose on energy components we all are lazy so are the organs so why to use active if you have passive right so it's relatively unusual it, occur, it occurs against the concentration grain now since you require energy you can lift up water from the ground to the hill isn't it you require energy for the pumps same way even active absorption it can occur against the concentration gradient so it has nothing to do with whether which side is having more molecules of drug and so on it requires carrier it requires energy it's very specific uh, it's very specific as you have pumps which are specific for oil specific for water hard water soft water so it's very specific so even these carrier molecules which require energy uh, or absorption active absorption it's very specific for the drug molecule it's a saturable process beyond a certain limit if you utilize all the available uh, what i can say molecules uh, all the available carrier proteins uh, the energy uh, the process would get saturated you cannot extend it beyond a certain limit uh, usually ion absorption levodopa by the brain uh, are the processes which usually take place with the help of active absorption so again an energy dependent process slightly different from the passive absorption so here you have the passive transport uh, a particular uh, particle in an area of high concentration diffuses through a protein so you can see high concentration low concentration just goes up but with active concentration it is against the concentration gradient requires energy in the form of atp so it's carrier mediated so it is something which requires energy saturable process against the concentration gradient so this is a good uh, i should say uh, uh, a picture which can uh, really tell you the differences between active and passive it's so common uh, drug absorption through passive but active is usually unusual i mean uh, rare to find this kind of a transport now these are the differences uh, so again we go to from high to low 
from low to high is active uh, requires a carrier and active doesn't require carrier and passive it's a non selective non saturable where active is saturated saturable and selective doesn't require energy requires and so these are brief points of differences between passive and active transport uh, and definitely deals with drugs to extend so you need to remember it as far as a, a subject is concerned in addition to that you also have facilitated diffusion it occurs along the concentration gradient requires carrier selective saturable no energy is required so even with passive diffusion you have something called as facilitated diffusion. facilitate you facilitate the transfer of one person from this country to some other country right so you are acting as a facilitator uh this process is again saturable if you uh, are having uh, say 10 proteins you use all those 10 proteins then uh, the process cannot go beyond a certain limit so it's a saturable process it's very selective okay so some people uh, are in a mode to only transport uh, what i can say vegetables from one country to other country some would be doing some human trafficking so again uh, dawn or a mafia side so it's a very specific huh? you cannot put the same person into the other basket and say that you are a transporter so uh, i mean transporter what is this i mean hollywood okay it's not a transporter but it's very selective saturable process so requires carriers uh, occurs in the line of concentration gradient so slightly different from passive diffusion but again uh, you don't require energy for this process so here is facilitated diffusion you have so many drug molecules then you have the protein uh, sticks to the drug molecule and just facilitates its entry so see it's very selective again you're using all these three proteins it becomes saturated don't require energy in line with concentration gradient so here so many molecules here no molecules so it's it's coming up so it's trying to bring equilibrium between high concentration and at the low concentration of drug molecules uh, then we have slight differences uh, active transport is something from low to high but this is carrier mediated or facilitated transportation is from high to low so it's always in the line of concentration gradient this requires carriers active transport uh, it also require facilitated transporters uh, done by carriers it's selective and saturable again facilitated diffusion is selective and saturable we have seen why requires energy but here in facilitated diffusion you don't require this. so slight differences so it's not the same as that of active transport but anyway it exists so we need to know about a facilitated diffusion uh, which doesn't require uh, energy then we have endocytos sometimes you know you have bulk molecules you um, that you need to carry you require a big truck okay you require a very big truck to transport molecules so same way is endocytosis so endocytosis endo word endo uh, endo is something which is in inside and cytosis cytosis deals with cytoplasm or something of that kind so involves engulfing extracellular material within a segment of cell membrane to form a vesicle or a saccule so here you can see uh, these substances and the cell membrane just tries to engulf that material and bring it inside uh, so it is something where uh, substances are brought inside uh, the cell but bulk molecules remember again a simple process we have endocytosis we have seen in that we have pinocytosis pinocytosis usually kind of cell drinking or what i can call as the water is or liquids are taken in in phagocytosis we have solid particles or material that are being taken inside the cell usually the processes that is discussed is all about endocytosis in the same way uh, you have what's called exocytosis so substances bulk substances are thrown out by the process of exocytosis we will come to the slide uh, uh, after this so this is about pinocytosis a lot of water taken inside and its absorption of fat soluble vitamins uh, and their uptake of nutrients usually occurs to pinocytosis your phagocytosis a uh, typical of amoeba cell and you also a big thing a big vacuole form here which consists of solid particles which is ingested food material i should say so that's kind of phagocytosis which deals with the bulk molecules but usually the solid ones 
Exocytosis is something of excretory process. Bulk molecules are thrown out. We have seen that. And um, that's the process. Okay. So here you have um, the vesicle that is formed and just it becomes a part of cell membrane and the things are just thrown out. So that's the way exocytosis works. If you are talking of exocytosis, that's kind of excretion of bulk molecules by the cells. At the end, we also have pore transport. Uh, importance of absorption of low molecular weight uh, size. So, if the molec drug molecule size is less uh, than specific thing, then what we see is the pore transport. You generally, water soluble drugs uh, escapes through aqueous field channels or pores in the cell membrane. So, that is what we are talking of. So, pores act as way by which molecules can be transferred from one side to other side but their molecule size should be less it cannot be something which is very high otherwise it becomes a bulk molecule and it may not just pass through the force the driving force for the passage of drugs is hydrostatic uh, or the osmotic pressure differences so there are going to be changes in the pressure on both the sides of the cell membrane so that defines how much pore transportation should take place. But again, remember, you need to look at the drug molecule size uh, and the diameter of the pore. That will define exactly which molecules can go from one side to other side uh, and not something else. So that is something like the you know, mouse entering. Up. Uh, if, you have, if you have a small burrow and you have a mouse and a lion, the mouse can really enter, but the lion cannot enter the burrow. So that's the difference in the size. Huh? But if you, it's a cave, then maybe a mouse can also enter as well as the lion can also enter. So depending upon the diameter of the pore uh, and the diameter of the drug molecule, both these things decide how much pore transportation should take place when you talk of these systems of drug absorption. So that was a brief on um, drug absorption mechanisms. So we have seen something on passive diffusion, which doesn't require energy in line with concentration gradient. Then we have what's called as active transport, which requires energy, saturable process. Molecules get from one side to other side against the concentration gradient, requires energy. Then we have facilitated uh, what is a transport that is slightly a modification of passive diffusion, but requires a carrier molecule. So a specific selective uh, saturable process but again in line of concentration gradient and then we have the processes for bulk molecules for example we have the endocytosis in which you have pinocytosis for liquids and phagocytosis for uh, I should say for solid materials that you take in with formation of a cycles or saccules and then you have excretory process of bulk molecules which are through the cycles again and we have seen a good animation on that where all bulk molecules and liquid substances are thrown out of the cell uh, in bulk. And at the end, we have the pore transport. But again, depends upon, as I said, upon the uh, drug molecule size as well as the size of the, uh, what I can say, the pore. So it all these are the processes which bring about generally drug absorption. One of these processes has to work if you are trying to give uh, the drug to an individual for getting the drug to the required site and from there within the uh, cells that is what we are talking of uh, site of absorption uh, mostly most of the drugs you know small intestine is one part of the entire body a lot of surface area it's meant for absorption of substances so even drugs mostly do get absorbed through small intestine yeah, and uh, it has it is a vascular area again so again uh, a good amount of blood supply is existing so uh, the drugs can really go into the bloodstream through the small intestine once it, they get absorbed through uh, the walls of the intestine uh, now, when we talk of absorption of drug, we talk of two things. We talk of rate and extent. Uh, rate is how rapidly does the drug gets from its site of absorption to general circulation. So, it's the rate. Huh? So, rate is like it gets into blood circulation within two minutes. So, that's the kind of rate. And extent. Huh? Extent is how much of the administered dose enters into circulation. So, rate is different from extent. For example, I give 100 milligrams of a specific drug only 25 milligrams get into the 
systemic circulation so that is the extent so we are losing on to 75 milligrams of drugs in this process so that's not good right so rate is like how fast an extent would be how much of the drug gets into the body so these two things i have to deal uh, when you talk of absorption of drugs within the body and that was about rate and extent but if i want to define it in a very proper way medical terms then the thing i need to know is bioavailability of the drugs bio availability of the drugs it is it is defined as a fraction remember the term fraction fraction is shown by the arrow. fraction amount of percentage whatever you feel it i feel comfortable with fraction of the drug that is absorbed from a given dosage form and reaches the systemic circulation in unchanged form so that's the clear cut difference so fraction of the total amount of drug okay fraction of the total amount of drug reaching the systemic circulation in an unchanged form again giving you example if you give 100 milligrams of paracetamol just 25 for example it's not it might not be true just 25 milligrams of paracetamol reaches the systemic circulation in unchanged form so viability of paracetamol then becomes like hmm, it's, 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 it's one fourth of the given amount of dose it's just one fourth of the given amount of dose so remember viability very simple it's the fraction it's a part of the total amount of the truck reaching the systemic circulation in an unchanged form that unchanged form is very again is a, is a important one if you don't add this unchanged form your definition of viability becomes uh, void so you need to know that it's a part of the truck or a fraction of the truck total truck given which reaches a systemic circulation in an unchanged form so that's about viability of the drugs now why you require to know about this principle is that uh, you take drugs by so many we have seen that root of administration of drugs if you are new to my channel always see my lectures on um, root of administration of drugs that will give you idea on how drugs are administered but uh, just to give you a brief on that drugs can be given by so many ways you know you can give by intravenous route, intramuscular route, oral route, subcutaneous route and so on. So, uh, as, I, as I informed you, viability is the fraction of the total amount of drug. If I am directly pushing the drug inside my intravascular compartment, almost 100% of the drug is going to go into the systemic circulation unchanged within a minute, right? Do you agree or not? If I am giving a drug by intravenous route, by intravenous route, the entire amount of drug is going to get into the systemic circulation within minutes, that too in an unchanged form, that too in an unchanged form. So, viability for IV administration is almost like 100%, 100%, right? But at the same time, if you are giving the same drug by oral route, maybe 50% of that is lost, is lost, and uh, it is not even getting absorbed. Uh, through the intestine is lost in the feces so just 50 percent is the viability if you are giving the same drug by uh, what i can say by oral route so this lies a difference between uh, viability of the same drug given by different routes usually for iv administration it should be 100 percent intramuscular should be less than that but the least should be about uh, least will be with the oral administration because you lose on so many milligrams or grams of drugs when you give drugs by oral route so that lies a difference and also define this 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 differences also define why toxic doses or toxic effects of the drug occur with specific administration and why not with the other if you are trying to push the drug by intravenous route you need to be careful we discuss this point right when i had a lecture so we need to be careful because the reason is that uh, the toxic effects of the drug might just come up because the entire drug is pushed within the body unchanged within minutes as compared to oral route out of the 100 milligrams just might be 50 milligrams get absorbed so you still have the safety margin safety margin um, so that the toxic effects may not come now again 
the situation, uh, the scenario might demand you to have, give drugs or administer drug by a specific route. So just uh, to avoid side effect, it cannot be that you give all drugs by uh, oral route network. It cannot happen that way. You need to be rational. Uh, it's just not about viability, but it is about uh, various other things also. So that's the principles that you talk of when you deal with viability. Again, uh, you need to again decide uh, depending upon the viability, the dose of the drug. Okay, so you require specific amount within the blood. So this much is lost. So how much should be the initial dose? So that's how you retrospectively calculate and find out uh, the required dose for a specific uh, drug of uh, for an individual and for a specific condition. Now that is a, a graph which tells you about uh, various um, uh, viability of various drugs. So with intravenous route, you can see the viability is almost like 100% achieved very rapidly. And then there's a fall with intramuscular uh, slightly delayed with the effervescent tablet which dissolves quickly uh, uh, and is absorbed so slightly higher but then with just tablets you can see this dotted line the viability is very less as compared to what happens with the internal route and that is what we defined it okay so that is what i was talking about you move on to oral route the viability will go on um, decreasing um, in its effect uh, on its total quantities as compared to what happens with the intravenous route of administration of drugs. Uh, there are factors which affect viability of the drugs, right? So, sorry. So, uh, sorry for that. Okay. So, there are factors which affect viability of the drugs. Okay. So, there are drug related factors and there are patient related factors. We will come to these factors one by one. We have physical properties of a drug. We have the physical state in which drug exists. It, uh, then, uh, viability is also determined by uh, lipid water solubility of the drug, concentration of the drug, nature of dosage form because that is uh, again dependent on particle size dissolution and disintegration time formulations and at the last route of administration of drugs <laughs> and then what we also have is the patient related factors so in which you have physiological factors we have ionization uh, we have ph gi gastric time metabolism of the drugs presence of other agents enterohepatic circulation area of absorbing surface plasma protein binding, pharmacogenetic factors and, and disease factors which do govern uh, the amount of viability of the drugs which is achieved within the body. When we talk of physical state of the drug, then liquids are better absorbed than solid. <laughs> Why is it so? Why is it so? Liquid occurs in solution, suspension, this spread. You try to spread water onto a table. Huh? You just try to drop uh, a few drops of water on the table and see the spreading uh, variety you know it will spread across but the same amount of powder you try to put it onto the table it won't spread at as much uh, so liquid has that kinetic motion it spreads around so you spread it across the absorption will be better because you have a huge surface area within the git that is gastrointestinal tract so absorption is better as compared to solids where uh, the distribution of uh, the solids across that surface membrane may not be the same. Uh, crystalloids are absorbed better than colloids. That's also seen when you talk of physical state of the drug. Lipid and water solubility of the drug. Drug in aqueous solution mix more and readily than those in oily solutions with the aqueous phase. So that determines okay, how much amount of uh, drugs might get into the body. At cell surface, lipid soluble drugs penetrate more rapidly. So, if you talk of uh, the cell surface, you apply kind of a grease, uh, you try to apply some kind of a ointment which is oily based onto the skin, it gets absorbed. As compared to water, try to rub a few drops of water onto the skin, uh, it, it will get uh, uh, distributed across your skin, but absorption will be hardly any. So, but with lipid soluble ointments, the absorption is better, right? So, that defines, okay, so more the lipid soluble drugs, more is the absorption at the cell surface. And you have certain fat soluble vitamins uh, that gets absorbed very well uh, within the GIT. Concentration, 
concentration as you see passive diffusion facilitated diffusion the more the concentration on one side the more is the transfer of molecules from one side to other side uh, that is usually that we have seen uh, with passive transport and facilitated transport in, in the slides shown earlier in this uh, entire uh, lecture particle size large particles uh, you know slower the absorption large particles bulk molecules absorption is less smaller particles absorption is more um, uh, and that determines okay how much amount of dose you require to give so uh, you want a drug molecule to be of optimum size so that it can pass on very well from one side to other side but in nature and practice it doesn't happen you still have those bulk molecules with you which are unable to get absorbed uh, because of their large size then we have something called as disintegration and dissolution time disintegration you, know, you have seen the um, dosage form my lectures on dosage form again if you are new to my channel please watch my lecture on dosage forms uh, drugs are available as solids liquids and gases in solids we have tablets capsules uh, syrups uh, and other liquid formulation this integration time refers to oral formulations oral solid oral they refer to solid oral formulations this integrate they break down so a tablet is a hard compressed medication so it has to break apart so that it can get absorbed a tablet cannot get absorbed the entire tablet on its own it's not something which is a uh, kind of a uh, magic phenomena absorption so the particles the tablet has to break down okay so that time required for the breaking down of the tablet is what we call it disintegration time okay so time required for breaking the tablet is what we call as disintegration time so that in turn determines absorption uh, less the time required for disintegration better the thing okay uh, and vice versa and then we have the dissolution time just putting it in powder form is not going to help it should form a solution with the surrounding uh, um, uh, liquid entities so that the absorption will be better so uh, the time required to put that powder disintegrated powder into solution is what we call as dissolution time dissolution time it dissolves into the liquid phase so that the absorption is better again less the time required better is the absorption and vice versa formulations um, there's so many formulations okay so tablets generally will take a longer time for absorption as compared to injections uh, syrups will be something in between injections and oral tablets again it depends right what kind of formulations that are you are using and that will determine the rate and the extent of absorption of drugs again route of administration if you are giving iv route immediately the 100 percent concentration is actually within the plasma and uh, viability is like 100 percent but with oral route it is delayed it's incomplete because there's a lot of loss of drugs when you talk of oral absorption of drugs even though it's one of the best methods and it's one of the most user friendly ways in which drugs can be made available now after this we come to something called as ionization okay so ionization is something of a charge on the drug molecule so to look into that i would like you to first look at uh, this uh, this this two uh, uh, pharmacology spellings here now you look at the, the first spelling hmm? uh, the pharmac i am not here to teach you spellings I'm not english teacher but anyway look into these two uh, phenomena and then it will define what is ionization is now you look into this this is a black color farm and cology huh? but the a is something which is orange in color do you think this a here is going to be comfortable in between all these blacks i am not uh, talking of any racial discrimination at this point or uh, nothing of that so i'm just trying to teach you something on the very basics of uh, how you can know what happens with ionization so take me in the right sense so pharmacology the a is not going to feel comfortable because it is of different color as compared to uh, the uh, farm and cology on both sides okay it's because these are black color and this is something which is orange in color okay so uh, what is going to happen this person here or this a here is going to be more alert more vigilant right okay you are putting 
uh, up a thing which is not uh, in uh, what I can say A is not comfortable here so it's going to be like you, know, you are staying at home alone in darkness you are the only light of the day so you feel more responsible you are more aware at that time okay so A here is going to get charged up charged up it will carry some charge so in what I need to say is that in this environment which is not suitable for this the A becomes charged so in other terms so in other terms if we talk of this uh, black color uh, coding here if this is going to be uh, what I can say is a base is a basic uh, this is a this is this is a basic substance this is a basic substance so in a basic environment the acidic a acidic a is going to become more charged more charged right so a uh, acidic drug acid drug will become more ionized or carry more charge in a basic environment one thing that you need to remember but now you put the same a into this figure uh, you put them into all orange color things now you see it's very comfortable it's very comfortable because it is uh, uh, in line with uh, all the letters which are of the same color so here the a molecule or the a part is going to be relaxed so it's unionized do not carry any charge it's going to be like a very lazy person so absorption is going to be better so here a is going to be charged more ionized in a different environment but within the same environment the a molecule or the a part is going to be like unionized very lazy fellow okay what happens here now if i try to push now go back to the sequence now if the molecule is ionized here the a is amongst the other black letters so a is more ionized it is having a more charge on it these charged molecules are not this charge on the molecules is not going to allow it to cross the membrane so ionized drugs do not cross membrane and absorption is reduced whereas un non ionized drug molecules uh, you put the same orange letter of a within all orange it is going to be a lazy person without any charge on it this molecule is going to get absorbed through the cell membrane because it doesn't carry any charge now we extrapolate these things this that the the, 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 the pharmacology spelling that i just told you with what's happening so if we go back if we go back at this figure what you can see is that a is charged so if we think of this as a basic environment the black as the basic environment the acidic a is going to get more charge and there is going to be no absorption so acidic drugs do not get absorbed in the basic environment same applies to your basic drug. if you think that this is a base if a is a basic substance and pharma farm and cology are acidic environment and this is basic molecule is going to get more charge so no absorption okay so it carries more charge so no absorption but whereas the same a put here so acidic environment and acidic substance so acidic environment and acidic substance anion ion unionized molecules so readily can cross the uh, cell membranes and absorption is better you think of this A as a basic thing, basic environment on both sides, okay, unionized molecules, absorption is better. So, pH of a drug, pH of the environment do affect ionization and ionization in turn affects the absorption. More the ionization, less is the absorption. Less the ionization, more is the absorption. Basic drugs will get ionized more in acidic environment. And acidic drugs will get ionized more in basic environment. It's just becoming more alert to the surrounding. So that is what I was talking of. I hope you got this concept right because that's important when you talk of ionization. So that is what is shown in this figure. <coughs> Sorry. So non-ionized drugs which are more lipid soluble and diffuse across cell membranes more easily. So that is what I was talking of okay there are some other factors also which affect oral drug absorption gastrointestinal motility <laughs> you talk of gastrointestinal motility you have a person who is having constant diarrhea diarrhea episodes of diarrhea vomiting 
do you think the drug is going to remain in the GIT if you are giving drugs by oral route? Definitely not. So gastrointestinal motility is the important factor when you talk of absorption huh? because it irritates the entire GIT, any kind of diarrhea, any kind of disease, any kind of vomiting of the GIT and it really makes uh, absorption of the drugs very uh, variable. Huh? Then. Um, uh, motility can also be decreased by food diseases and drugs okay so that also in turn affects uh, how much amount of drugs might get absorbed more the amount of drug uh, more the time the drug remains within the GIT more it will be the absorption so we are trying to add any drug or trying to give drugs with food and some patients with diseases of the GIT be aware of what's happening with the absorption metabolism and efflux Many drugs are metabolized in the intestinal tract. So as I said to you in my lecture on metabolism, if you are new to my channel, again, watch my videos on metabolism of drugs. So all organs in this body have the capacity to metabolize drugs and uh, of, of, uh, extent of drug might also get metabolized within the intestinal wall and uh, the viability can get reduced uh, if it happens so. Many drugs are efflux from ileal enterocytes to gut lumen by transport proteins. So these are some efflux proteins which transport the drugs back into the lumen. Uh, anyway, it's a minor pathway, it should not be a matter of fact, but that exists and that might have, have an impact on the viability, especially when you talk of clinical research, you want to detect a dose of a drug, frequency of administration, these all things matter. But in clinical practice, uh, maybe that doesn't carry that much of value but they exist and as a medical or health professionals you need to know that the efflux proteins which can put the drug back into the lumen uh, from the GIT. Uh, changes in pH of the gastrointestinal tract we already seen that any change in gastric pH affects the ionization and that in turn affects how much amount of drugs can get absorbed. A pH can also get absorbed by taking drugs. If the patient is taking antacids, uh, you put down the pH of the gastric mucosa, uh, gastric, uh, uh, I mean, stomach. So drugs usually which are going to get absorbed through the stomach may not get so absorbed. So, uh, you know, food diseases, these all things do have an impact on pH of the GIT and that in turn may have an impact on how much amount of drugs uh, will get ionized, which drug will get ionized and how much will be the absorption later on. Now that was about absorption. The last thing that we need to see at glance is first pass metabolism. Now once the drug is entering the systemic circulation, remember term, once the drug is entering the systemic circulation, it enters through the portal circulation and goes into the liver. Okay, so liver is some organ where metabolism occurs. Okay? It's kind of a factory wherein all foreign substances will be detoxified, nullified, actions are nullified. So the first time, the first time the drug passes through the GI, through the liver is called as the first pass metabolism. Hmm? So maybe 100 milligrams of a drug is given to an individual just 50 milligrams enters the bloodstream the portal circulation and out of the 50 milligrams just 25 milligrams reaches the systemic circulation so 25 percent dot is lost when the drug is passing through the liver so first pass metabolism it has something to do with hepatic metabolism of drugs and it significantly reduces the viability of the drugs some drugs might have a high first metabolism in which you require to give higher doses of a drug and um, it really makes uh, sometimes therapies uh, uh, difficult because the determination of a dose of a drug then becomes a challenge. Now here you have uh, the intestinal tract, drugs get absorbed through the portal systems, uh, through the GIT, enter the portal systems, liver is one organ where uh, the drugs are going to get metabolized so you know a fraction of this uh, this is 100 milligrams the amount reaching the portal circulation is just 50 because 50 is lost here but out of that just 50 just 25 reaches to systemic circulation because 50 is detoxified by the liver in its first uh, path from the portal circulation to systemic so there's a huge loss of drug uh, when 
uh, you give drugs by oral route and that's that's the thing uh, that's because oral route becomes the highly invariable uh, and that is one of the limiting factors when you talk of oral absorption of drug molecules as i said uh, some drugs might have high first metabolism some drugs might have low first pass metabolism drugs with high first metabolism would be something on propranolol it's a beta blocker verapamil it's a calcium channel blocker and drugs with low first pass metabolism would be something on theophylline tolbutamide uh, theophylline is again a anti uh, it's, it's a kind of a drug given for bronchial asthma phosphodiesterase inhibitor it's again anti diabetic drug tolbutamide so here I need to increase the dose because a lot of drug is lost when it is passing through the liver. But here I need to be very careful because the metabolism is slow because a less amount of drug is lost within the liver. So I need to really check on the dose because a slight increase in the dose and this can bring about accumulation of drug within the body and can then bring about a lot of toxic effects. So there lies a difference between what's happening with the uh, drugs with high first metabolism and low first pass metabolism of drugs. Uh, presence of other agents yes presence of other agents agents do have an impact on absorption like for example vitamin c enhances absorption of iron calcium in general retards absorption of tetracycline so it's always advisable to know these things before you counsel patients on when to take the drugs okay whether to take it with food whether to take it on empty stomach can you increase absorption by giving some drugs and something of that sort so this is a counseling episode uh, that you need to know before you prescribe drugs to the individual now some drugs also undergo enterohepatic circulation so for example morphine okay we already learned about enterohepatic circulation in uh, lecture and not directly on enterohepatic but something to do with uh, you know kind of excretion there we seen the enterohepatic circulation so morphine um, undergoes this kind of a metabolism so it remains in the body for a very long time so try to be very sure and how much amount of repeated doses of morphine you need to give uh, otherwise the thing is the drugs may keep on accumulating and can bring about a sudden what i can say a side effect of a drug so mm, that's important area of absorption surface and of course blood circulation uh, the more is the area of absorption the more is the so the more is the surface for absorption more is the rate and extent of absorption again more the vascularity of the organ more is the absorption because that's very simple isn't it because blood is going to uh, drug is going to go into the blood so more the vascularity more is the absorption surface area okay you try to spread uh, what i can say water on a football field on a football uh, what stadium the entire ground a lot of uh, what i can say a huge surface area so absorption is very quick as against that you try to pour water uh, same quantities of water on a tip of needle uh, so very small surface area so absorption is going to be negligible so it's like at more the surface area more is the absorption again vascularity which is not mentioned here sorry for that but that again counts to more absorption if more vascular the organ then we have certain cases in which we get altered absorption for example changes in gastrointestinal ph uh, example should be ketoconazole needs acidic conditions in git we have seen this uh, change in gi ph uh, just now so that's just example on that so trying to take any kind of antacid and it might just bring down the absorption of ketoconazole drugs binding in git as we have seen that calcium and tetracycline you know they form complexes which may not get, get absorbed so there is a huge loss of tetracycline if you are giving calcium with tetracycline uh, changes in gastrointestinal flora antibiotics usually there is something called as good and bad bacteria called as uh, within the gi team uh, they try to break uh, down the material and help in absorption but antibiotics usually cause gastric upset because they also try to kill the good bacteria which are present within the gi team so that affects motility in turn and then can affect absorption and alter the way in which it can be given directly or indirectly changes in gastrointestinal motility like drugs like metaclopramide or prokinetic drugs cesapride mozapride they bring about a lot of uh, gi stimulation less gastric emptying time and so on so they can really affect drugs which are going to get absorbed through the upper gi so more the motility like diarrhea vomiting 
absorption is going to be negligible in those cases so you think of a lot of conditions and then you will come across that yes gastrointestinal motility normal ones is required for uh, good absorption of the drugs malabsorption by the drugs early start and fat metabolism vitamins so soluble vitamins uh, the malabsorption can occur when you give two or three drugs together which can combine and form complexes or which can in turn affect absorption so these things also can have an impact on absorption of drugs now that was all about uh, absorption of drugs i hope you got through these slides uh, in a very uh, a quick way uh, <laughs> Early, early 30, 35 minutes I took to complete the lecture. Uh, if you have any doubts, please post it on my channel. Uh, do subscribe. Your subscriptions do matter to me as far as uh, I, uh, my channel is concerned. And I need to move on. I require your subscriptions. Uh, thank you. Uh, do keep watching. Happy learning. Enjoy.